We're back with part two of the shell ejection tutorial in Resolve. If you haven't seen part one, how I built this shell, you may want to watch that. Or if you have purchased a 3D model, then that may replace all of this. Maybe not the shading. You may want to do that yourself. But uh, we will move that off to the side because we'll switch to something completely different for the time being. Before we get much further, I wanted to invite you to visit my website, metafy.com. On my website, you'll see some of the software tools that I've been writing for Resolve. That's kind of what's been keeping me busy from making these tutorials. I've been doing a lot of custom programming for clients like Simon Says and Color Lab AI and some other ones as well. Anyway, let's go back to our tutorial. I will add a particle emitter and a particle renderer. Let's zoom in there. So I'm going to push play how the particles are amassing inside of the sphere. Let's click on the emitter. In the controls, we're going to change a couple of things. First, we'll give the particles some velocity, so they're moving away from the emitter. And I'll spin it around. I want them to go to the left. And then we'll do a little bit of angle variance, maybe 15, and Z angle variance as well. Maybe we'll do 30. So if you look at it from the top, actually, let's switch to the quad view. So this is a top. See how now with the Z angle variance, we're spreading them out. This is the front view. The angle variance in the front gives us that. I will reduce the number of particles because each one of these will become one shell casing and this is way too many of course. Increase the velocity so they're moving away with a faster rate of speed. We'll angle it slightly upward so they're ejected up. Let's reduce the number of particles yet and you know here in style we can switch to Oh, not a blob line would be better. Our selection of the particle style here it's not really going to matter in the end but we just want something we can see a little better on the screen while we're working with it. Okay, great, so let's do even fewer particles, maybe 0.3. That's a good starting point. Now we want them to drop down, so there's a directional force that we're going to use. Hold shift to drop it here between these two. The directional force is already pulling them down like gravity. Uh, it can be fine-tuned by selecting a region and setting what happens when the particles enter or leave that region and so forth. But I think this will probably be enough for what we're trying to do. We're getting a kind of a cascading waterfall look. Let's just play with the strength. All right. I feel like we should increase the velocity and maybe get fewer particles. All right, not bad. Now, they look like they're shooting out too far, so let's see if playing with the strength works. All right, cool. They're being ejected and they're falling down. Now we'll select our particle render and add Replicate 3D. Let's drag it up here. And Replicate 3D, as you can see, it's red right now because it requires a second input, and that's some geometry. We're going to attach our shell casing. This section here was only there for the purpose of our viewing we did, but we don't really need it for this. I might end up using a Transform 3D, so what I'll do is I will branch it off and attach that to the Replicate 3D. And let's see what we have. Okay, well, it's changed the color, so that's good. Maybe I will size up these shells. All right, so that's good so far, but they're all lined up the same way. We need to give them some rotation. You might have seen in the particle emitter, there are these spin controls and rotation controls. Those will actually not help us with the Replicate 3D. What we need to do is animate a spin of our own here. So first I'll do, uh, I'll control click uh, these dots here to reset our shell. And uh, let's see here, how is this position? Okay, good. So, well, it's not good. It's it, the, the, the shell case is pointing up. So we have to rotate this thing to have them point at us, which actually needs to go the other way, I think, like that. Okay, so there'll be 90 degrees. I mean, they don't have to, but we're sort of assuming the gun is in front of us, shooting towards the camera or off to the side. So now, you see all these little circles? The shell casings are all lined up the same way. 
but we need to give them a little bit of a spin. As they're being ejected, the shell casings will spin counterclockwise seen from top down, so they will kind of go this way. So what we'll do is set a keyframe here at the first frame, and then just move any number of frames and set another keyframe and give it a little bit of a spin. Let's look at the spline editor. You can drag this over here. That is our spin. Actually, this will start at zero. Go to the next frame, like that. You see that curve? That's the duration of our spin, but we need to right click here and set the gradient extrapolation, which will cause this rotation just to continue. It's far too slow, but we can fix that by adjusting the second keyframe here. So instead of uh, 67 degrees, by this point, I want these to make four full rotations. Okay, so it's still a little slow. So what I'll do is I'm gonna select this keyframe, just slide it over to the left. Okay, so now that's, that's spinning a little better. But the shells are still all spinning in unison. I'll close the spline editor so we have more room. And we fix that by going to Replicate 3D and selecting Time Offset. So let's select maybe 5. And now when I stop, see how they're all pointing in different directions. Also here in Replicate 3D, there are a couple of other controls we can use to give these shell casings some random spin. Good. I'll go back to the emitter and uh, decrease the number and increase the velocity. Now this is all in a 3D space. Let's render that out. So I'm going to steal this thing that we made before, move it down because that's a merged 3D that already has some lighting that we could use, perhaps adjust it a little bit. I'll drag this render 3D over here. And to see this better, I'm going to turn off the checkered background by right clicking here and saying options checker underlay off and let's see what happens when I push play I just rotated the merge 3D so the shell casings are kind of flying towards us so now if we were comping this into a real shot there would be quite a few things to do like matching the light lining up the camera angle perhaps tracking it if the shot is moving placing particle bounces if these shells are supposed to be hitting hard objects, and so forth. But we won't get there because uh, we'll just leave it here over black. However, I'll show you how to turn on the motion blur, which will give it the realism you need. So in the render, if you click on the settings, there's a motion blur setting. But when it comes to particles, you also have to enable it in the particle render. Settings, motion blur. Quality setting of 2 is quite low. I'll set it to 5 right now. That's something you would have to see, you know, what blends the best with your background shot and as well as the shutter angle. For now, this will do for us. I will set up 5 here as well. As soon as you turn on the motion blur, things do slow down. Cool. Pressing A will show you the alpha. So this is fully compositable if you were to take it out and comp it on the timeline, but you would probably do it right here in Fusion. For the sake of speed, I will disable our motion blur. And I will show you how to do a short burst fire or a single fire. You saw already that in the particle emitter, the, there's a direct correlation between the number here and how many shells we see on the screen. But I'm going to leave that number fairly low and open up our spline editor. Let's drag and drop this here. And we'll set a keyframe here for the number. As soon as I do that, I see it in the graph. I just dragged it down. So this is 0 0.1, this is 1. It looks like a straight line because we're zoomed out, but if I click on this, you'll see how it drops down. Let's do a few of these. Now I'm going to select all of these and press Shift-I push play and see what we get. By changing the amplitude of this keyframe we can fine-tune how many shells are flying out. So if you wanted to do a single fire each one of these little notches would represent a single fire. You can change the timing by dragging them so we can put this later in time. If we increase this what happens is, and I'll increase it in time as well, 
this will give particle emitter more particles to emit in a longer time, so you get this kind of a burst effect. So it's just a matter of adjusting that, so this is a short burst. One. And of course, moving the position of the lights has quite a bit of effect on the look, and you can see that interactively, and uh, the goal would be to match the light sources in the scene. We haven't really spent much time creating this. I just kind of wanted you to see the skeleton of this. You would have to tweak it a little more to make it match your background, but it can get quite good. Like, here's the, the examples that I showed you in part one. This is it for the uh, shell ejection animation. I hope you enjoyed it, and you can use this, and thank you for watching.